All right, let's learn some actual self-defense. A huge issue in self-defense training is people training overly complicated moves against very basic attacks. For example, somebody will come in with a push or a grab or throw one punch and all of a sudden you're going to do 5,000 moves before that person has a chance to throw off a second one or even bothers countering. Now obviously that's not how a real situation happens, but on the other part of that you're just training nonsense, so the skills you're internalizing don't actually mean anything. One of the key things in self-defense is simplicity. Uh, I have a saying that I repeat over and over with my students, and that's what we do is simple, not easy. And the next biggest thing is people not pressure testing. If you're always succeeding in your drill or your technique or your combination, you have completely unrealistic skills and your expectations of what is actually going to happen uh, versus the reality are going to be polar opposites. So what we're going to look at today is one of my favorite drills that I truly love that is not only simplistic, but it involves pressure testing as well. For today, we're not going to follow up with any counterattacks, but you of course could. Um, what I find is really important is that when you're doing a drill like this, you shouldn't make it all about fighting right away because then you lose sight of what the drill is actually for. For this drill, all your training partner is going to do is step forward first with a push. It doesn't matter if it's one hand, two hands, right or left. It doesn't make a difference. The only thing that they want to focus on is aiming dead center for your chest for right now. Don't worry about left or right, just go dead center. That way you as the other partner has the option of going left or right. Then in the following sequence, they're going to throw a punch. Uh, same idea, but you just want to work both. A uh, push is very exaggerated and a punch usually snaps back. Now as they step in with that push or punch, all I want to do, it doesn't matter how I'm standing. If I'm in a fighting stance already or if I'm in a natural stance, it doesn't make a difference. Um, I'm going to pick one side, left or right. Most of the time, you want to try to stay to the outside of their body. We've gone over this before, you know, center line, outside. Okay, so you're inside, in here and outside if you're outside of their shoulder. So as they come in with that punch or push, I'm going to take one leg and sidestep. My other leg is going to swing behind me, pivoting behind me, known as a rear pivot or pivot out. My hand, all it's going to do, if it's down, it's going to come up and move from my lead shoulder across to my rear shoulder. That's it. If I'm going the other way, then it's going to work the other side. So when I combine all these together, as I sidestep, my hand is going to come up, and as I pivot, my hand is going to move across that line, not passing my shoulder and not straightening out. So there's a couple principles we usually follow, and that's no straight limbs and keep your elbow below your wrist. This will allow you to stay within your um, proper range of leverage and power. Very important. As I'm doing that, I want to aim from the center of my palm down to right above my elbow. I want this big margin for error. I don't want to focus on just the center of my palm because then usually what happens is you're going to aim down or shoot or fire it down and you end up catching with the fingers and it'll always bend back and you'll have nothing, no leverage, uh, no way to stay attached to them. It's important in this first step that we're not trying to go super hard or super fast. This is a drill to build mechanics. So it's important to go slow so that way you can understand what your body's doing and notice what theirs is doing as well. Now as the training partner, you're actually trying to work a push. Even though you're going slow and not trying to throw them off of a building or something like that, uh, you actually do want to follow through, aim correctly, keep your other hand up, you know, behave like you would, just slower and less intense. So now we're going to do the exact same thing, but instead of just using one hand, we're going to use two. Um, ideally, that'll be decided by your footwork, whether you're going to go with one hand or two, or left or right. But for this example, as they come in with that push or punch, as I sidestep, instead of beginning with my lead hand, I'm going to start with my rear hand. Same footwork, I'm going to step over, sidestep with one leg, and swing the rear leg behind me. As I do that, my rear hand is going to start the check and then my lead hand, as I pivot, is gonna push that hand or punch away.
Okay, so now that we've drilled that and you've gotten the hang of it, your partner is going to now put a little more intensity, a little more intent behind it. So when they come in with that push, they're really going to lunge, overcommit, and really try to push. You're going to do the same thing. Now you can choose whether you're going one hand or two hands. The biggest thing as you start to add a little more pressure is what you find, you don't necessarily decide which one you're going to do. It'll be based on what's appropriate at the time, and your brain should kind of shut off uh, and just allow your body to react appropriately. So one time as they're coming in with that big push or big push this way, uh, you might do one hand as you sidestep and pivot. Another time you might do the rear hand or one time you might go left, the other time you might go right. It doesn't matter. That's the point is that it's not robotic set in stone. It's not choreographed dance sequence. <laughs> Now your partner is going to throw a punch, a bit faster, a bit more intense, really trying to aim at you. Uh, that's important as the person feeding or throwing the punches, you really do want to aim uh, where you should be aiming. If it's at their jaw or their nose, um, or if you're going low, it doesn't matter, but you really want to focus on your drill or your technique, and in this case, it's throwing a punch. What you'll notice though is when your partner is pushing, you're able to create a pretty extreme 90 degree angle. Be perpendicular to them where you could then fire off other attacks. When they're punching faster and snapping their punches back, uh, you'll find that that angle becomes less and less extreme because they're not committing quite as much. They're able to change positions and target you much easier. That's a big deal. Um, you can't think that the way somebody commits to a push and the way somebody commits to a punch is the same. It's usually not. Of course there are cases, you know, somebody throws a big lumbering punch and comes forward, great. But most times if somebody knows what they're doing and they're really throwing punches at you, they're not leaving it out there. They're not uh, falling forward as they're doing it. They're pulling their punches back and they're going to continue to target you. So as you're doing this drill, you'll notice that your angles will be less extreme and the pressure is a little greater. So now what we're going to do is mix it up. So your training partner can either throw a punch or push. Doesn't make a difference. You're going to put a little more pressure, a little more intensity. And what you're going to try to do is use the drill more realistically. Sometimes it's going to work, sometimes it's not. That's a big thing. Um, a lot. Of, what you'll see at a lot of uh, martial arts or self-defense schools that um, maybe have a little warped view of reality on this stuff is that they think that their movements have a 100% success rate. That's crazy. Um, if you go into any school or train with any uh, teacher who has been in fights or has competed in the ring, even the, the most common, uh, let's look at boxing for example, the jab, okay, or the one-two. Uh, very successful technique, right? Really obvious combination uh, taught in every boxing school around the world. Everybody knows a one-two. So that means the success rate is high. And when you're doing it on the mitts or the bag, of course, you're always going to succeed. But when you're trying to do it against someone who is trying not to get hit, it's going to fail a lot. If you look at judo, you look at um, Olympic level judo, right? You have two black belts, uh, incredibly skilled, right? I mean, they're in the Olympics. These people work their whole lives. They get to this point. Okay, now in the gym separately or in their school, if they do one move, it's going to work most of the time. 
they're drilling it, their partner's standing there, they're going to come in and it works all the time. But now all of a sudden they're against another black belt, so equal or better skill, and then that other black belt doesn't want them to do that move. So this thing that was 90 or 100% success rate on the mat now is 30, 40%, if that. So it's a really important distinction that when you start moving faster and you start dealing with more pressure and resistance, that the success rate of all of these things is gonna go down. So the idea that we always operate uh, with moves that are the highest success rate possible never means 100%. That's ridiculous, so get that out of your head right now. Now a big thing with all of these is we don't wanna lean back if we can avoid it. Sometimes you're just gonna do that. Um, as long as you get out of the way and don't get hit and set yourself up uh, to move effectively again, it's fine. But try not to lean back and try not to let your hands go too far in front of your face. Remember, no straight limbs, elbows below the wrists. All right, so there you go. Very simple, very effective, very useful drill. Give it a shot and let me know what you think. I know right now we didn't add any counters, but you can see even from the video that once you angle off, the ability to hit with that rear straight or even if you're gonna go in for a, um, a side control or a single leg or double leg or you like kicks, you're gonna throw a roundhouse or something like that, uh, it's all there, but for right now, just do the evading part. That's the most important. So I'll leave you with a video of myself and a couple of my students doing this uh, against a one-two. And uh, yeah, enjoy. As always, please like, subscribe, comment, share. Uh, it, it truly helps me out. And I'll see you next time. Peace.